Good morning. It's good to be back with you again today. We appreciate the goodness of God. Thank God for watching over us uh, down to another week. And uh, <clears throat> today, by the help of the Lord, we're going to get started into the book of Revelations, chapter 6. Amen. And uh, uh, it starts to get exciting. Uh, uh, we're opening up the chapters now that it's going to be revealing uh, those things that will come after the church has been raptured and uh, and we're starting to see uh, uh, we'll be introducing this morning uh, the white horse rider in the first uh, uh, two verses of the of chapter six and we'll probably deal with that for a pretty good while and and uh, there's a little bit of controversy concerning who this white horse rider is they some people think that this is Jesus that's riding this white horse, but friend, I've got news for you. Uh, this is the counterfeit Christ. This is the Antichrist uh, that is riding on this horse, and by the help of the Lord, and comparing Scripture with Scripture, uh, this morning we want to try our best to help you to see that today. Uh, friend, this is a, 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 this man, when he comes uh, on the scene, friend, he's going to be uh, dealing with a group of people uh, that has been deceived. Amen. Uh, uh, down here in this world, and uh, that has been sent strong delusions, and they're going to believe the lie, friend, uh, and they'll be damned, uh, according to the book of the Second Thessalonians. And we will read that to you again just in a few minutes. Uh, I guess it's been a few years ago now. Uh, began God began to show me uh, a lot of great things concerning. Uh, the, the scriptures and concerning the things of the end. And uh, uh, friend, it's not hidden from us. It's not a mystery this morning. Uh, amen. This is uh, uh, something that's going to happen. And when it happens down here in this world, friend, if you're here to see these things, uh, I hope and pray, uh, uh, friend, uh, that'll be uh, that you'll be able to overcome the delusions uh, that God's going to send down here in this world. I hope and pray uh, that you'll be able to focus yourself uh, on trying to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, because there is a good chance, friend, you'll have to give your life, uh, your own life's blood for the cause of Christ. And we'll get into that as we get on into the seals uh, of uh, and get into those things. And uh, it's a lot of people says, well, all of this can't happen. God's a loving God and surely he won't, uh, he won't do what, uh, a lot of this is talking about in the book of revelations. And then I've had people come to me and say, well, you know, why do, why do you, uh, or why are you so fascinated with those things that are happening? It's going to happen, uh, down in the end. Well, first of all, there's a blessing on the reading of, of the book of revelation. God pronounces that. Uh, over there in the first chapter, and you and I today, uh, if we'll read and we'll understand, now you go all the way back into the book of Daniel. Let's just go back to there just for a moment. In Daniel chapter 12, Daniel was told to seal up the words of this prophecy, that what God was showing him. Daniel saw a lot of this, and uh, uh, it wasn't permitted for Daniel to, uh, to bring it out because it wasn't time yet. Uh, friend, it was that was before the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, and, and he. But, but God showed him uh, uh, the, all of the kingdoms of this world, all the way down to the end. And Daniel saw uh, all of these things, and uh, uh, and it was also revealed to Daniel that sixty nine weeks would uh, would would come uh, would be the end up uh, at the end of the sixty ninth week would be the fulfillment. Uh, of the time of grace, a man that would come into this world. And that last week, that uh, the 70th week of Daniel would be a time of Jacob's trouble. It would be a time of great wrath being poured out upon this world. I believe in one place it talks about, uh, friend, that uh, uh, there's not been wrath, uh, not since the beginning of time up until this will take place and won't be none after that, like God's fixing to pour out his wrath. You say, well, is, is God a, a wrathful God? Uh, uh, he's a loving God. Uh, God is love. Amen. But uh, it's been my experience down through life that uh, uh, you can push people to the point where that even the most, uh, the most calm, 
uh, biased person that you know of, you can push them over their, over their limit, in other words, and uh, they'll lash out at you. Eventually, they will lash out at you. Well, now, God set up uh, from the beginning uh, salvation, friend. It goes, you can find salvation in Genesis all the way down to the end of this. Salvation has come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have uh, everlasting life. God is love. And God so loved us that he gave his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come down here into this world and die, uh, friend, on the cross of Calvary. Uh, the third important morning, he was resurrected uh, by the power of God. Jesus said over there, he said, I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to, bring, uh, to take it up again. Amen. He came out of the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he finished the work that God had told him to do uh, while he was down here on this earth. He completed uh, that. And he became the redeemer uh, of this world. Amen. Uh, through him, you and I can have redemption. Uh, we can have a place in heaven, friend, because the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, satisfied uh, a righteous God that's sitting up on the throne uh, that demanded a sacrifice be made. Amen. And Jesus made that sacrifice. God himself, friend, come down into this world, gave his own life uh, a ransom uh, for yours and my life. Amen. God loved you that much, friend, out there in the world. Listen to me right now. And God cares for you. But, friend, if you, de if you deny uh, that there is a God, if you deny the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, if you walk away from it and you say it's nothing, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, then, uh, you don't, don't you think maybe that that might disappoint God just a little bit, maybe more than just a little bit, maybe it'll stir him up. Now I've got one son and, uh, Daniel's had some troubles down here in this life. Uh, he's had some medical problems and first one thing, another like that. Uh, but now it pleases me, uh, when somebody talks about my son to me, amen. Uh, every once in a while, I'll meet somebody and said, you know, and I had a gentleman not too awful long ago uh, uh, speak to me, and he said, David, you've done a good job raising that boy. Uh, he, he's a good man. And, uh, uh, you know, and boy, I tell you what, I just begin to swell up on the inside, amen, to hear those words that come to my ears. Now, think about this. Uh, when we lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to talk about what a wonderful person he is and what a wonderful Savior he is and what he did on the cross at Calvary for mine and your salvation for him, don't you think maybe that that, make, that makes God happy? Uh, don't you think maybe that God swells up just a little bit and says, uh, thank you, son, for what you've done. Amen. Thank you for representing me down here on this earth. Amen. Now, I tell you what, friend, when you get to really thinking about how, how, how close uh, that we pattern our lives and our families after the love of God down here in this world, amen. But now you start putting down my son and you start uh, talking about uh, how sorry he is or why, or, you know, or anything like that right there. And you start making up lies about my son. And saying that, you know, it don't matter and, and, you know, and things like that right there. Friend, you're getting on the fight inside of me. And it don't take just a heartbeat, uh, friend, for me to get back in somebody's face that, that runs my son down. And why? Because he's blood of my blood. Because he is uh, 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 my son. Amen. And because I love him from the deep in the hole of my heart. Amen. Now, you want to get on the fight inside of me? I just start putting down somebody in my family. Uh, that's just simple as that. I, you know, I try my best to control my anger, and uh, I'll walk away from stuff that, uh, that I ought to speak up, and I'll keep it in, and, and uh, I'll deal with it my way between me and God on a lot of things. But now, when you get into my family and start, and start harping on me, uh, you know, uh, to God, uh, then it stirs something. All right. Now, we're getting into the wrath of God. It's beginning to be poured out. 
one of the first things, friend, after God takes us uh, out of this world and the rapture takes place uh, down here in this world, one of the first things you and I are going to see, uh, amen, when we get up there, is we're going to see Jesus, um, God sitting on the throne, Jesus, the righteous, uh, uh, sitting there beside him, the one that's been making intercession with us. But the world's going to see something different, friend. Uh, the world that is left behind after the rapture. You say, well, preacher, you keep saying the word rapture uh, uh, and it's not, in the, it's not in the word of God. Well, there's two or three places that talks about uh, uh, what this, the word rapture means. Listen to what it says in verse 4 of the, chapter, uh, of the book of Revelation. He said, and after this, I looked and behold, a door was open uh, in heaven and the first voice which I heard uh, was it as it were a trumpet talking with me and said, come up hither. Amen. That little phrase, come up hither, uh, gives reference to the word rapture, which means the taking away or the taking out uh, uh, of this world. Amen. He said, and I'll show you the things which must be uh, hereafter. Now, keep that verse of scripture in your mind. And I want to flip over here uh, to uh, the, th the book of Thessalonians just for a moment. And listen to what it says here. Amen. Uh, in Thess 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, and by the gathering together unto him. What is that gathering together unto him? When God walks out on the, uh, the balcony of, of heaven, uh, now I'm paraphrasing, when God walks out on the, uh, the balcony of heaven and, he, and the trumpet is blown, friend, uh, and he hears those words, come up hither, children. That's you and I that are born into the family of God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way, friend, you can get there. You can't buy your way in. Uh, you can't work your way in. Amen. You have to accept what Jesus Christ done on the cross of Calvary and the blood sacrifice that was made for you uh, and believe and trust in him uh, down in your heart and soul and ask Jesus to come into you, uh, friend, and you'll become a child of God. Amen. And, and, and he's going to take us out of this world one of these days. We're leaving here, friend, and I believe we're leaving here real soon. Amen. Now, I'm saying all of this to introduce First uh, chapter 6, uh, verses 1 and 2, and I'll read it here just in a few moments. Amen. By the help of the Lord. But listen to what it says here. He says, uh, See that you be not soon shaken in mind or in trouble, neither by uh, spirit nor by word nor by letter from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, I'm going to talk to you Christian people just for a moment. Amen. Uh, uh Christian people, you should not be fretting about or being troubled in your mind about the coming of the Lord, friend. It's coming. Now, it says that it's coming as a thief in the night, friend, to those that do, that do not know uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. But you and I that know uh, Jesus Christ is our Savior and he lives down in our heart and soul, friend, uh, we're looking for him. Amen. Uh, every day that comes down here in this world is another day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it, friend. Why? How, but how can we rejoice in this day here? This might be the day that Jesus Christ comes and, and, and takes his church uh, out of this world. And you and I, friend, that's saved by grace of God, uh, friend, we'll, uh, uh, we'll so, so shall we ever be with the Lord in the air. What a glorious hope. What a glorious day. Uh, that's going to be, and we'll soon see our Savior, friend. Uh, Re Revelation chapter five. We'll see the one, uh, friend, that was that was that come down here and, and sacrificed himself. He was the Lamb that was slain uh, for the before the foundation of the world. It said, uh, Jesus uh, said, "I'll go and redeem them back," and he redeemed. Not only us, friend, but he's fixing to redeem this earth uh, one of these days. Amen. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, but he was found worthy to open uh, the seals that brings the terms of redemption uh, for the children of Israel and the terms of redemption for this earth uh, down here in this world, friend. Uh, but they, something's got to happen first. Let me go back to chapter uh 
forward the book of Revelations just for a second and let, listen to what it says. And I read in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, And after this, look at that word, after this, uh, amen. Uh, what's it after? After the dispensation of the grace of God is finished, amen. After the church uh, has got ready, amen. After in, in uh, the church of the uh, Philadelphia, listen to what it says in chapter 3, verse 17 of the book of Revelation. He says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods <coughs> and have need of nothing, then knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Amen. What's he doing there? Uh, in verse 16, listen to what he says. Uh, so then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, uh, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. Now, friend, do you think maybe that God's got a belly full of people that's playing church? Do you think maybe that God's got a belly full of all of this stuff that's been going on in this world? Uh, the iniquity of man, uh, the inventors of evil things. Romans chapter 1 talks about that. Well, let's just go over there right real quick. And I didn't know I was going this direction on that, but I want to, I want to show you something by the help of God as I get on into this. And it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, when you think about it, uh, there's no other course than what God has laid out here. Listen, I'm going to start reading in verse uh, uh, 28 of the book of Romans chapter 1. It says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate minds to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all un unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envies, murders, debate, deceit, malignity. Uh, that's something that eats like a cancer. Whispers, backbiters, haters of God, uh, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, uh, disobedient to parents, without natural effect, uh, without, without, Understanding, I'm sorry. Without understanding, uh, covenant breakers, uh, without natural affection, implacable, uh, unmerciful, knowing, who knowing, listen to what it says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but to have pleasure in them that do him, that, that do them. My goodness gracious, friend, listen to what it says. Let me go back up here and and, and get something else in that. I hadn't found the, the verse of Scripture that I was looking for. Uh, I'll start reading in verse 24. Uh, it says, Wherefore God also gave, uh, gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts uh, to dishonor their bodies uh, between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Listen to that. Look at that. They changed the truth of God. This world, friend, has, is changing the truth of God uh, into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, uh, for even their women did change the natural use uh, into that which is against nature. And likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust, one toward another, men uh, working, let me see, let me grab you, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, even as they did not like to retain God. All right, listen to me. As we begin to think about this and we say, uh, why is God fixing to pour out his wrath upon this earth? Why is God fixing to do these things? Now, let me read a little bit more in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He says, uh, all right. He said, verse 3, he says, uh, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, uh, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, 
Keep that little thought in your mind. Uh, he's going to be revealed, friend. Uh, but there has to be a falling away first. Amen. When you say, well, what is the falling away? People changing the glory of God into corruptible things like four-footed beasts. They don't even like to retain God in their thoughts, in their imaginations. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, and they went uh, uh, crazy. I mean, that's just about all you can make out of it. Uh, the world's going crazy. Uh, and then in the last verse of Romans chapter 1 down there, it says, and they have pleasure in it. Now, what sells more than anything else in this world? What is most of, no, not, not 99%. What is 100% most of the time of all of the commercials uh, out here? It's promoting uh, sexual pleasure. It's promoting uh, uh, anything that you can do to, you know, to have pleasure. How many, ver uh, how many scriptures or how many commercials or how many things do you see on primetime television uh, at any given time that promotes uh, the Lord Jesus Christ? There's very little, very little. Now, I applaud that they put a couple of commercials on during the Super Bowl uh, 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 while he was watching it. And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't care much about the halftime thing, but that's just me. I, you know, the world's full of, uh, full of people that, that eat stuff like that up. Uh, but, you know, I did enjoy the fact that they had a couple of commercials on there promoting uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, friend. Uh, I hope and pray that some of those commercials had an effect on people. Hey, Amen. Uh, but because we're living in the last days, friend, because we're living in a time uh, when people is walking away uh, from God. Now, uh, let me get off of that before I get into something other that, uh, 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 let me get back into this. Amen. Uh, the world's went crazy. But anyway, uh, let's get back down into this right here. And, and let me read a little bit more. Verse 7. Uh, it says, for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work only, this is Second Thessalonians chapter 2, for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now what's going on out here in this world, friend? Uh, it seems like it's an abomination uh, all the time. And, that, and what's causing it to go on? Uh, mankind. Uh, is causing things to go on. But they something, God is letting this happen. You say, well, why is God letting this happen? Because uh, they scriptures throughout the word of God that talks about that the love of many would wax cold uh, in the last days, uh, that uh, men would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God uh, in the last day. Uh, they scriptures like... Uh, 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 like this one right here, that uh, the love of many, uh, not that, let me grab that back again, uh, that uh, they'll fall away, talking about the falling away. And, and they're, they're falling away, not from uh, the things of the world, friend. They're falling away from the love of God that was sent into this world. They're falling away from the truth. Amen. Romans chapter 1, over said they change what? Uh, the truth into a lie. Now, did you ever live in a time right now where that we live, uh, friend, that uh, uh, things is happening uh, like they're happening? Those things that used to be uh, bad and, and evil, they're talked about being good. Now things that, that used to be good and righteous and holy and wholesome, uh, they're bad. And, uh, you know, they said there would come a day when good would be uh, evil and evil uh, would be good. Uh, so we're here. We're here, friend. We are. And here we are coming up on the spring of the year. If God tarries his coming, uh, it won't be too awful long. We're going to see the flowers begin to bloom. And I've already seen a few daffodils blooming in certain places. Uh, but we're going to see the trees begin to bud. We're going to see things bringing forth. Uh, God is blessing. I've been hearing the songs of the spring birds as they're coming in. Uh, they've been seeing a few robins around here and there. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's always a good sign to us that what? That summer is nigh. Spring's coming and summer is nigh. Uh, Matthew 
24 over there said, and he said, when you see these things come to pass, know you that summer is nigh even at the door. Well, let's look at the spiritual side of that. Amen. When we see all of these things coming to pass, what? Uh, the falling away, uh, the man, men are turning away from God, changing the truth into a lie. Uh, we see the, the, the love of many waxing cold. Amen. We begin to see all of these things take place. Then what does that tell us? It tells us that the soon coming of the Lord is nigh at hand. Amen. Uh, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, there's a war going on right now uh, over there that's a senseless war. It shouldn't even have happened. Uh, amen. But then there's uh, rumors of war. Uh, we're living under the threat of a nuclear bomb attack. It's any time uh, from, uh, from some of the other nations uh, that's out there in the world right now. Uh, I lived and grew up during the time of the Cold War uh, and that that was going on. Uh, in that day and time. There's always been a fear uh, in the back of my mind and everything. What if happens if the bomb drops? Amen. And uh, after I got saved by the grace of God and, and began to grow a little bit in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and began to see how close we are to the coming of the Lord, uh, friend, uh, I, you know, we've got a, a, a place down here that's probably on the, on the prime target list in the little old county that I live in. And, and, if there's a bomb going to drop, I hope I'm driving by the front gate uh, when it hits. Amen. Because just in an instant, I'm going to be present with the Lord. Amen. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Boy, I'm looking forward to that. Now, whether it comes through, uh, through death down here in this world naturally, uh, through an accident or, or, or through you know something other like that, or the rapture of the church. Personally, I believe, friend, that uh, that I'll be in the rapture of the church uh, when uh, the Lord comes. Amen. I feel like it's that close. Amen. Not only this feeling that I have down inside of me concerning that there, it's all over the world. The book of Joel, I believe it is, brought it out over there. He said in the last days, he said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, and uh, uh, he said, he talked about the the. Uh, young, uh, old men dreaming dreams and young men having visions and so forth, so forth. It goes all the way down even to the layman uh, that's out here in this world. And, you know, and it gives, and it, in Acts chapter 2, I believe, brings out the same thing. And uh, uh, I believe we're living in that time where God has poured out his spirit uh, upon uh, everyone on the, on the face of, of God's green earth. Amen. There are a lot of people that and that spiritually minded understands that the soon coming of the Lord is not at hand. Uh, we know, amen, we know. And, and what we know is get, we get it out of the word of God. That's what we know. But the unregenerated man, the lost man that's out there in the world, they know something's happening. Something's in the air. They've been people for the last seven or, or 10, well, maybe, maybe the last 20 years uh, that has been preparing uh, for the apocalypse. In other words, or the, or something great going to happen. They've been digging caves in the mountains and they've been stocking them with food and, and you can go, the preppers, you can go out there uh, in the world and you can buy enough food to last you three or four years or whatever like that, uh, friend. And uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not preparing. I'm not going to buy an extra loaf of bread if I don't have to. Uh, amen. Uh, you know what will happen? They'll have a snowstorm coming in here. And just in a few minutes, you can go down to the grocery store after that announcement's come in. And they'll buy out half of the store. Uh, and, you know, they'll get two or three loaves of bread and a couple of gallons of milk and, and half a dozen eggs. And first one thing, another like that there. Uh, and, you know, a bunch of stuff uh, for a two-day snowstorm. Guess what happens? Down about the end of two weeks, that extra loaf of bread that's been laying there uh, has got stale and it's sowed in the trash. Think about that. Uh, because they were afraid they would get caught in a snowstorm uh, without any provisions. Well, the world is afraid they're going to get caught out here uh, with something, some kind of catastrophe that's coming. And friend, the catastrophe that's coming is the taking away of God's people out of this world. And friend, it's going to change the whole course of all of the world. The whole course of all of the world. 
We, we see things now talking about the, new, the, the great reset, uh, the one world government, uh, all of these things that are you know, that in the news today and uh, you know, that uh, uh, it's going to be a one world currency and all that thing. Well, I'm going to show you that when we get on into the word of God. Uh, it's in there, friend. It's coming and it's going to happen. Uh, I'm not trying to scare you anything, but if you're not ready to meet God, friend, you're going to live through this, and it's going to be a living hell down here on this earth. And there's a good chance, friend, if you're listening to what I'm telling you today, uh, and you're listening to the Word of God, and you've heard the Word of God, and you've turned down the, the, the blood offering that was made, that's what Jesus Christ come into this world, and you turn it down, friend, uh, then you're going to fall right into what I'm fixing to read just in a second. Let me read just a little bit more. This is in Second Thessalonians, once again, uh, chapter 2. He says, "For uh, I'm going to start reading verse 7. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work, only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He says, and then, listen to what it says. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God is going to take, is letting this thing happen the way God uh, uh, prophesied it was going to happen. It has to happen that way. God does not deviate uh, 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 from his plan, friend. He set forth a plan before the foundation of this world. Jesus said, Father, I'll go and redeem them back. And guess what he did? He came and he re and brought redemption so that you and I wouldn't have to die and be or wouldn't have to be left behind when the wrath of God is coming down here on this earth. It's prophesied that God is going to tread the winepress of the wrath of the almighty God, friend. God's bringing a tribulation on this world such as it's never been. Amen. The Bible says the mountains will be brought low. The, the islands will be, will be moved out of their places. Uh, that's a restructuring, friend, uh, of the face of the earth. Amen. Uh, he's going to he talks about the trees being burned up and all the green grass being burned up. He's talking about that the, the, the heat uh, from the sun is going to scorch men's backs. Amen. Uh, there's some things going to come up out of the bottomless pit, friend, that's going to bring torture uh, to this world down here. But you know what? Uh, the, the worst part about it is there's one that's coming and he's riding on a white horse and it's not Jesus, friend. It's the Antichrist because all that God is, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God always has been, is now, and always will be. But then there is, the, there, there is a, a, a evil trinity uh, that's set up through Satan. When Satan was cast out into this world, friend, uh, he lost his estate in heaven. God stripped him uh, of all that he had out in heaven. Now, he was Lucifer in the beginning, and now he's the dragon. You will read about him in Revelation chapter 12. He's that old serpent uh, that talks about over in the Garden of Eden when he came and, and, and uh, beguiled Adam and Eve. Amen. He's the father of liars. Amen. He's a counterfeit. As a counterfeit, Antichrist means a uh, counterfeit. He is the counterfeit. He's the one uh, that's going to come into this world, friend, and he's going to bring uh, peace to a time of chaos. Now, the Bible says over there, and Jesus, and I didn't have time to look this up, but I believe it's in the book of Matthew. And, uh, and, and I probably will butcher this, and I can't quote it, uh, but I can give you the gist of what that verse of Scripture says over there. Uh, and they was, uh, uh, they was questioning Jesus about something, and I can't remember exactly what, but he said, I come not into this world to bring peace, but to bring a sword. Amen. To bring division. Amen. What was that sword and that d division? The sword is the Word of God. Amen. The division is, is what Paul said, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Friend, you and I are not of this world. Amen. Uh, we, we serve a risen Savior, friend. We serve one that, uh, that's coming one of these days to bring wrath into this world. And when he comes to bring wrath, friend, uh, it, would, it would behoove you to be ready uh, to meet God. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 
Uh, verse 44 says, Be ye also ready in the air that you think not the Son of Man cometh. That don't mean uh, have you a hole dug in the ground and a whole bunch of food and guns stocked in there and ammunition and things like that, friend. That's not going to help you. Not one little bit. The only way you can be ready, friend, for this, for this, what's coming down here in this world is be ready to go with the Lord. That's the only way you can be ready. Amen. These countless scriptures uh, down through the word of God that point you to a man called Jesus. Amen. Jesus, it's written. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me. Friend, God's give us a plan. Amen. And why would we deviate uh, from the plan that God has given and try to take something on ourselves uh, that we're not able to, uh, to, to take care of? Now, I'd be a fool to tell you that God's people is not going to uh, suffer down here for the cause of Christ. They suffered in the beginning, and friend, I'd be a fool to tell you that you're not going to suffer. You may have to give your life for the cause of Christ before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. These people doing that every day. They go, you go into these communist countries where they hate Christians with a, uh, with, with a passion. You go into one of these communist countries and everything, and if you try to lift up the name of Jesus Christ over there, guess what they'll do? Uh, they'll either beat you to death with clubs, or they'll kill you uh, just in a little while. We're going to get there in chapter 6 of the book of Revelations. We're going to find a whole bunch of them that give their life for the cause of Christ. And we'll deal with that when we get down there if time tarries. All right, let's get back into this again. Yeah, I know. Uh, I can't help myself. I, I'm like Paul of old. Much learning doth make me mad. But I'm not mad, friend, uh, in the sense that I ain't got good sense. You man, uh, I'm mad at sin. Uh, down here in this world, I am, uh, I am. Uh, but uh, the, God give us a way to get out of that. Give us a way to escape uh, a sinful life, friend. Now, I'd have to admit, in the last church age, he said over there that they were rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing, uh, friend. But uh, And God's going to spew out that bunch, amen. I'm talking to you church member right now. That's just church. That's member of the organization down here called the church. Church member, if you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, uh, I beg you to get a hold of the horns of the altar and begin to cry out. Believe what Jesus gave in the Word of God. I had the opportunity just a few days ago uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went and watched the movie uh, Kevin Sorbo, and uh, it's in the Left Behind series. It's a remake of, of that, and it's called The Rise of the Antichrist. And uh, uh, I don't go along with uh, some of the stuff that was, was in there. Uh, but uh, uh, all in all, it was, a, it was a good movie. It's well made, and it's to the point. And if you go, if you get an opportunity, friend, to watch that movie, I, I urge you to go watch it. I do. I urge you to go watch it because it, it's pretty spot on about the way that the Antichrist is going to happen. The only thing about it is it brings it out that the Antichrist doesn't make his appearance to the midway of the tribulation. And I disagree with that. But that's me personally. And there's a lot of people that, that thinks that way. And, and I, I'm not falling out with you in any way concerning that the main thing is friend uh that first three and a half years of peace uh you're not going to have that opportunity that a lot of people thinks they're going to have uh there's a lot of people waiting uh, is waiting for the rapture of the church they know it's going to happen they're waiting for the rapture of the church but they've been deceived in thinking uh that uh, they might have the mind to to call on christ during that uh, three and a half years of peace the Bible says when they, they cried out, peace, peace, and then uh, it says, then sudden destruction. We'll get into that too by the help of the Lord when we get to that part. All right, once again, let me read again. Verse 8, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, uh, I want to call your attention back up. To verse 1, now we beseech you, brethren, by the, mercy, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him. In other words, the rapture, uh, that we're going out of here. Uh, amen. Then he goes out and he comforts us a little bit in verse 2. Uh, talked about, and, and then he talks about verse 3, not to let any man deceive you. 
uh, for that, that, you know, talking about those things that are happening up until that coming. Uh, then it talks about verse four, it says, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called of God or is worship of God so that he as God sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now think about that. This verse four does happen at the mid part of the tribulation period. Amen. That's after the Jewish people have rebuilt the temple. Uh, and uh, this is also refers back to the abomination of the desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet in the book of Daniel. Also uh, recorded in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 24 talks about that. And then he goes ahead and then verse 5. And then, then notice what he says. He says, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you of these things. Amen. He's telling us. Right now, friend, that these things is happening and they're going to happen and they're coming. Amen. This word is true. You'll find out that John uh, that walked with Jesus Christ uh, that wrote the book of Revelations over there. And he said, and I witness and I saw and these things that I saw are true. Amen. This is the truth. And the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's talking about down and end of this thing. All right. Even who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now let's look at verse nine just for a second over there. Now the, the Antichrist is coming. Amen. And he's coming with uh, uh, all deceivableness uh, because he is a liar and the father of lies uh, of unrighteousness. Uh, in them that perish. Who's he talking about them that perish? Them that are left behind, friend. They're them that perish because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. What about that? What about that? They, they receive not the love of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's it in a nutshell, brother friend out there in the world that's lost. Jesus come into this world to save you. And friend, if you will not receive that, then you will, according to the authority of God's word, you will meet the Antichrist. You'll be left behind and you'll meet him. Uh, amen. He says, and for this cause, God shall send strong delusions that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, there it is again, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Going back to Romans chapter one again, last verse down there, they had what? Pleasure in those, in those sins that they was doing. And it gives a whole list of that just above those verses of scripture in Romans chapter one. Amen. You think about what the world's teaching today, what the world's trying to teach to our kids. And everything. I never thought I'd ever see a time when children uh, that's in young grades, uh, young in young elementary grades, were being taught the things that they're being taught today. Uh, amen. And this, uh, a lot of this stuff that's going on is contrary to God's word. But because they is a bunch of people that have refused uh, to believe in God and refused. Uh, and they've changed the glory of God into corruptible things. In verse, it said over there that God turned them over to reprobate minds. To quote a mythical preacher that's on a show that I used to listen to a whole lot years ago, uh, the Reverend Billy Ray on the John Boy and Billy show, he said, I'm never amazed. I'm never amazed when wicked people or lost people act lost. Now think about that. That's just a little piece of wisdom from a mythical preacher. Friend, I'm not a mythical preacher. God called me into the ministry in, uh, in 1995. Amen. I was saved December the 12th, 1978. And I've had an infatuation, friend, with the word of God ever since. Amen. I want to know as much as I possibly can about this Savior that saved me, friend. Called, you know the reason why I want to know? so that I can exalt him and lift him up and, and let him be, be a part of my life. Amen. He said, well, are you, are, are you righteous and, 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 and holier than thou? No, I'm just a sinner saved by the grace of God, friends, what I am. Uh, amen. 
And, and, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ, my deep and whole of my heart. Amen. And I love the God of heaven that sent him into this world to make it possible that I wouldn't have to go through the wrath of God because I believe and trust in him. Friend, my eggs is all in one basket, and that basket is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. I have believed the truth. Now, let's go over to the book of, uh, of, of uh, Revelations chapter 6. Now, I'm going to read verse 1 and 2, and then I'm going to uh, stop, and then we'll, we'll bring out a little bit more. It's done and got bigger than I even expected it to be. Uh, my friend, I wanted to bring you up to the point where this first seal uh, is going to be, we're going to be introducing the Antichrist into this world. Amen. Now, remember I said over there, and then it said in 2 Thessalonians, it said the man of sin would be revealed. Amen. He said immediately after the rapture. He says, come up hither. Amen. Now, when I... When when you, when this happens, just imagine this, friend. Imagine this, lost lost young family. Imagine this, and if you go watch the movie, you can see it. Uh, you know, and they did a pretty good job on bringing that out. Uh, but imagine this, young family, uh, that's out there trying your best to make ends meet, and you're living according to the course of this world. Uh, you know, and, and you've not asked Jesus Christ to come down in your heart and soul. Say you're sitting at the, at the dinner table. And the Bible says that he'll come as a thief in the night. The Bible said over there when God uh, took uh, uh, Noah and his family on the ark, he left the door open for a little while longer. Then God shut the door. And then it began to rain. And he said them people were eating and drinking and marrying and given in marriage and knew not till the Lord came and took them all away. Amen. Now, God destroyed this world in the beginning over there and because of the wickedness of man's heart, he saw that it was only evil continually. But God found grace or found righteousness or grace in one man's eyes and his name was Noah. And God saved his family and here we are up Coming up again, friend, uh, uh, to another cataclysmic, watch a big word, cataclysmic event that's going to take place here on this earth. Now, you're sitting at the, the dining room table. Uh, you've got two kids. You've got one that's five, one that's three, uh, and then you, uh, and uh, uh, your wife's pregnant. And you're sitting there at the table. And you're, you're talking about, uh, uh, you know, the kids, maybe planning their future uh, and uh, talking about the job, maybe a promotion that you got or something other like that. And you're caught up in, the, uh, in this world and all that this world has to offer. And maybe you both have really good educations and you was taught maybe while you was in school that there's no such thing as God, that evolution uh, is the way to go, and, and that one of these days it's going to evolve into a utopia. Friend, that's a lie uh, from the depths of hell. Friend, that's just all they are to it. It's a lie. Then all at once, that quick, Bible says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, those kids vanish right before your eyes, those two that are sitting there. And look, young lady, that one that's in your stomach, maybe that's eight or nine months old, uh, see, I believe, not talking about after birth, I'm talking about from the day of conception. You're about ready uh, to give birth. All at once, it's gone too. Now, you think that won't turn your world upside down? You think that your heart won't be broken? You're going to be standing there wondering what's going on. Amen. Friend, there's a God in heaven, and this is happening, and it's going to happen one of these days, according to the authority of God's word, uh, friend, and you'll be left behind. You'll be left behind to face uncertain days. Amen. If God lets me preach, I'll be in 2 Timothy chapter 3 next week by the help of the Lord. And the first verse, and that verse of scripture says, in, in the last days, perilous times are coming. Amen. Friend, these perilous times coming down here in this world. 
and 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 they somebody that's going to come, and and he's going to he's going to bring you a, a reason for the disappearance of your children. He's going to give you a reason why that people vanished all over this earth and why that uh, the world economy collapsed all at once. Uh, all nations all over this world, friend, will, will collapse. He's going to bring you uh, a, a big lie. And he said, because you were left behind, God has sent you or will send you uh, strong delusions. Let's say, for instance, maybe you like to take the children to church. Think about this. Let's say, think it, maybe you're, you've been going to church and you've heard the gospel preached and, 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 and you just don't want to accept uh, uh, what the Bible talks about the way that you ought to be a living down here in this world. Maybe you think it's not socially accepted down here in this world. Friend, you're going to be left behind. And God's going to send strong delusions. Why? Because you have not believed in the truth of God's words. And then when the, when the Antichrist comes, he's going to bring peace to all of this. Everything around here. This is not just going to be here in the United States, friend. It's going to be worldwide. And we're going to get into that a little bit deeper by the help of the Lord uh, next time. I appreciate your time this morning. I appreciate the word of God. Well, I didn't even get to read the, the verse of scripture, uh, but I will the next time as we get into it. Amen. That's what God's laid on our heart.